Hey there, I'm John from My Solar Home. I'm a solar professional, been doing solar and energy storage for the last 15 years. This video is going to be about Tesla versus Enphase Solar. The Tesla and Enphase are run by two really very smart people. Elon Musk needs no introduction. He runs Tesla. Briefly, Tesla actually never was in the solar business. Elon had to bail out his nephews who were running a company called Solar City. Solar City was erstwhile one of the largest installers of solar panels in the US. They just installed solar panels, but they kind of expanded at breakneck speed, borrowed a lot of money and were close to going bankrupt when Uncle Elon came and bailed them out. And he's been running Solar City ever since, since about 2016. Enphase, on the other hand, is run by another genius called Badri. Enphase is out of Silicon Valley and it's basically an engineering geek-led company and they're doing humongously well. Badri and his team, they're again a group of super geniuses who are making products which are lighting the solar industry. So let's look at how these two companies are doing and who you potentially choose as your solar company if you're deciding to go solar. So who's going to be the winner in the slugfest between Elon and Badri? Let's start with a little bit about the two companies. Tesla Solar is doing about $1.3 billion of revenue every year. A large percentage of this is actually revenues from their battery business. Their battery business is rocking. It's growing at 100 plus percent. But their solar installation business, actually putting solar on, that's doing okay, but it's growing at about 1%. Enphase, on the other hand, is growing at about 180, 190 percent year on year. Enphase has sold over 42 million of their products, which is the Enphase microinverters, across 130 countries. They're growing at about 198% year on year. Next, let's look at what kind of solar panels and inverters are used by these two companies. The Enphase is a manufacturing company. They actually manufacture the Enphase microinverters. So any Enphase solar system that you buy will come with an Enphase microinverter. They're in their eighth series of microinverters right now. These are very sophisticated chip-based microelectronic devices. What they do is they convert the energy uh, that the solar panels produce into usable AC current and each microinverter is placed behind every solar panel. So if you buy 20 panels, you buy 20 microinverters. Each of those panels produce DC energy which is converted by each individual microinverter into AC and you use that in your home. Tesla Solar on the other hand do not manufacture anything other than their batteries. That's right. Tesla is Tesla Energy or Tesla Solar is essentially a battery manufacturer. What they're doing is they buy solar panels and inverters from other companies. They put them together and install solar on your roof. They also manufacture the solar shingles, which are a huge failure. They stopped talking about it totally. Enphase sells their microinverters to every solar company in the United States today. So if you go to any installer and ask them for their product, they'll give it to you. They work with any solar panel. So you can buy a Panasonic solar panel, Q-cell panel, or an REC panel, or an LG panel. Compare this with Tesla. Tesla only offers you one panel. That panel is white labeled as a Tesla solar panel, but it is not made by Tesla. It is made by q -Sense. So on the choice of solar panels, clearly the Enphase ecosystem or Enphase solar is the winner. Let's look at the next big component in a solar system, which is the inverters. An Enphase solar system will come with an Enphase microinverter. These are small devices. They're like each Enphase microinverter is kind of the size of a book. It goes behind each solar panel. So each solar panel will have one microinverter behind it. This microinverter will convert the DC current from that solar panel into AC. If you compare this, what is done with Tesla, Tesla does not use microinverters. Tesla uses something known as a string inverter. But the big difference between a string inverter and the microinverter is that in the Tesla world, 15 to 20 panels are connected to one single inverter. If you have more than that, you might need a second inverter. String inverters have been used for a long time in the solar industry, but they've been used in the commercial side of the industry. Huge, large commercial solar installations with thousands of panels are usually the place where you will find central or string inverters. String inverters have haven't been really very popular in the residential world because they don't work 
too well on your roof. When solar panels are installed on your roof, they're usually installed on two or three different roofs. The amount of sun falling on each different roof depends on the way they are oriented. Also, the amount of sunlight falling on those panels could be different because there might be a little bit of shade from a tree on one roof. The another roof might be clear. String inverters work marvelously well if all the panels are facing in the same direction and if all of them get the same amount of sunlight. The moment you have multiple panels, different amounts of sunlight falling on the different panels, string inverters start to suck. On your right, you can see a group of panels connected to one single string inverter versus a group of panels with each individual microinverter. Now you imagine that during the course of a day, a little bit of shade hits one of these solar panels. Now, in the case of the N-phase microinverter system, only that panel will be affected by the shade and its production might go down from 100 to 50%, but the rest of the panels will all stay at 100%. But in case of a string inverter, the technology is such, if shade falls on one panel, your production from the entire group of panels will go down to 50%. So you can imagine what that does to your solar production. My recommendation to you if you're looking for solar is if you're thinking of going Tesla, only look at them if you have maybe one large roof with panels in them, then it makes sense to look at Tesla as an option. If you have panels in two or three roofs, you should not think about Tesla solar panels because they'll give you these string inverters and they suck. Another big difference between the Tesla inverters and the Enphase microinverters is their warranty. Tesla will offer you a 25 year warranty on their inverters, but actually the manufacturer warranty on his inverters is 10 to 12 years. You can expect your Tesla inverter to fail in 10 to 12 years and they'll have to come back and replace it. And when it fails, your entire system is down and none of these solar companies are nimble enough to be replacing your solar panels like Amazon does the next day. It's gonna take a week or so. And therefore, and that means your solar system, if you bought a Tesla system, is gonna be down for at least a week, 10 days, if not longer. Whereas if the same problem happens with an N-phase microinverter, one microinverter goes bad, 20 of your, out of 20, 19 of your panels will continue to work. Life goes on as usual, you will not even feel the loss of that microinverter. So this is another big advantage that the warranty and the serviceability of the N-phase microinverters are way better than the string inverters. Now let's look at storage. I have compared Tesla and N-phase batteries in my other videos, so I'm gonna make it short here. Both these companies make outstanding batteries. Tesla's lithium NMC battery technology is a little less safe than the lithium ferrous phosphate technology used by, by N-phase. Tesla's battery specs have got higher power. If you are planning to buy an N-phase system, then the N-phase battery is a much better choice because the integration between the N-phase battery and the N-phase microinverter and solar panels is way better than the integration that you will get if you buy a Tesla battery. So a Tesla battery is a better choice if you're buying the Tesla group of product. The N-phase battery is a better battery for you if you're buying the N-phase set, if you're buying N-phase technology. Products from Tesla and Enphase are extremely reliable, very low failure rates. There are a lot of other battery manufacturers who do not have the same kind of reliability and safety record as these two companies have. So if you look at a final comparison between Tesla and the Enphase, in terms of strength of their balance sheets, their prospects for the future, both score A+. The solar panels for both the companies N-phase scores higher than Tesla because Tesla is limited only to one set of Q-cell panels, whereas the N-phase ecosystem allows you to use any solar panel, including the top best solar panel. In terms of the solar panels for these two companies, N-phase gets an A+, and Tesla will get an A-. Now, in terms of inverter technology, clearly the microinverter technology from N-phase beats Tesla's string inverter technology hollow and I would give Tesla a B minus and N phase an A plus. In terms of battery technology, the combo price of solar panels plus battery that Tesla offers is definitely better than the combo price of solar panels and batteries from N phase. In terms of technology, there's not really much to separate the two of them. I give Tesla an A plus and N phase an A. In terms of warranty support and service, both of them will be quick about repairing their systems. Enphase are A plus and Tesla an A and the reason because Tesla has an inverter problem. So if you're planning to go solar, 
Choose wisely. I would stick with end phase when you have multiple roofs, when you may be not sure if whether you want to buy a battery. But if you have a single roof and you would only have one array there, then Tesla could be a good choice. Write to me at john at mysolarhome.us or give me a call 609-908-3700 if you're interested in looking for solar. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.